what you're going to be doing for your first project is you're going to make a short narrative without actors and without dialogue and just using symbols. And it can be multiple symbols or it also can be a single symbol that changes over time. So the symbols you use need to be universal and they need to really read as a symbol. So in other words, um, I don't want to have things that are distracting in the background that might confuse me from thinking it's a symbol. How can a water bottle be a symbol and not just a water bottle? Well, I'll tell you when it looks like a water bottle is maybe it's on a table and there's a bunch of like other stuff around it and I can see the label of the, the company on the water bottle. If you want to use a water bottle and make it look like a symbol, you make sure there's nothing in the background. You control the lighting. Think of it almost like a sculpture. Put it on a pedestal. Put it up high. Think about your camera angle, how you're showing it, and make sure there's no text on it, there are no labels. It's just a generic water bottle. Now it becomes a symbol of water in a bottle. All right? Maybe you want to have something like a vase with a flower in it, and that's a symbol, maybe a symbol of fragility, something that is sort of um, could, could break very easily. It's fragile. So again, I'm going to get distracted if I see a pot of spaghetti in the background, <laughs> especially if I'm hungry at that moment. And I'm not going to think about that vase with the flower in it as being a symbol. Instead, it's just going to be like your kitchen. So you need to shoot that somewhere, and the background where you shoot it could be part of the symbol. So maybe you shoot it outside on uh, green grass, and you shoot it from above, so the whole background is green. And then that sort of green color becomes part of my interpretation of this base. Or maybe you shoot it on, you put it on a stool, and it's right on the edge of the stool, and it looks like it's about to break. But there's nothing else distracting the background. I don't see your textbooks or your TV flaring or anything like that. And now I interpret it as a symbol. So really important when you're using symbols, it's how you shoot them. It's how you set up your background and make sure that you don't have anything distracting and that you're not using anything on your symbol that's going to take away from it being a symbol, generic symbol. So no labels like Nike or um, even if it's a book that you want to use, I would say wrap it up in paper, like um, pick the color of the paper that you want and think of how that contributes to the symbol so that we're not reading what the spine says or the, the name of the book. All right, so some universal, sub, some universal symbols, for example, water, like in this still from the video piece by an artist, Bill Viola, we're going to look at. And he uses water an awful lot, but he doesn't tell you what he wants you to get from the water as a symbol, that you have to interpret. And water is a really interesting symbol because it can mean life, it can be life-giving, it can also be destructive, it can kill. So that's a really interesting one. It could mean like a rebirth, um, sort of cleansing. So it can have all these positive contributions and it can also be really dark. So it depends on how you show us the water. A water in a water bottle is more like water contained. A gentle stream, that means one thing. Um, that's maybe like passing waters, calm, transition, going to another time, versus um, water that we see splashing on the side of a boat. That's pretty like violent. That's like kind of destructive, you know, like if the boat was moving. Um, water that is like just dropping from the sink faucet, you know, it's more about like the passing of time. So water has a lot of universal symbols, meaning like most people can look at water and the examples I just gave and come up with similar interpretations. A tree is another really strong universal symbol and that's why we see it used in advertisements so much, right? So like every time a bank wants to say, hey, we're going green, we're good for the environment, well, then they use a tree. So a tree often means good for the environment, thinking about the environment. A small tree might mean like growth. An old big tree might also mean growth or like family tree, history. And again, how you shoot these things will also change how we interpret them as symbols. Like a big tree shot from the bottom and we're looking up at it. That feels like, like family roots, like something that's solid, established. Or a little tree that we're sh we shoot from up high and pointing down might seem like something that's just trying to grow. A dead tree, destruction. 
a tree with green leaves is growth, birth. A tree with fall leaves, you know, passing of time. Fire, that's another one that can have both positive and negative meanings to them. So a lot of times fire is negative. It means like destruction. It also can mean passion. It also could mean calm if it's a candle that we're looking at. It has a certain cleansing. So fire can be cleansing as well. It can be warmth. So if I'm looking at a fireplace versus uh, a candle versus just a close-up of fire and it's burning things, they all have different meanings, but we're pretty able to understand those different meanings because we're used to fire being used as a symbol a lot. So like burning of something um, could mean like a cleansing of the past, sort of getting rid of it. And think about where that camera would be, if that's a close-up, a wide angle, up high, pointing down, mid-range, all of those will help us understand what you're trying to use the fire as a symbol of. A book often used as a, a symbol of knowledge, a symbol of history, of the peoples. So how you shoot that book, um, you could put it up on a, on a sort of a stool or make, put a sheet over a stool, make it look like a pedestal. Those things all matter. Um, but just try to stay away from us of having text on the book. So book, knowledge, education, right? So maybe you want to talk about like educational systems, high school versus college. You have thin books versus thick books. But wrap those books up in color, you know? We're, I'm going to talk in a second about the meanings behind color. Wrap them up in color so that we're not thinking about the specific book, but we're thinking of the book as a symbol, and then the color will also contribute to how we see it as like positive or negative. A house, again, could be positive or negative. It's an abandoned house. So that's maybe memories or something from the past, um, destruction. Or it could be a house that looks like cozy and it means like warmth and comfort and support. Okay? So your first project is really quite hard. <laughs> Sorry to say. It's your transition project. And what you're going to do in this project is you're going to make a narrative about a transition in your life but just using symbols. So for example, going to high school, feeling blocked, going to college, feeling liberation, all right? So maybe the, your, the symbols you're using are two different types of books, the books have different colors. How do you get the blocked part about or the transition? You know, I'm, maybe you burn a book. I hate to say that, I love books, but you know, for the sake of art, sometimes we do things. Or maybe the book is in some water and it's flowing down and then it gets blocked by some stones. So it's gonna be really abstract that perhaps someone outside this class might not be able to understand, depending on how clear your symbols are. But what you're not gonna do in an example like that is go and videotape your high school and then go and videotape your college. That's literal. So we're not doing anything literal. You're doing something that would be a symbol for the high school and a symbol for college. So color is also really important. Um, this is on the left here. Uh, this is a still from Brother Where Art Thou, a Cohen's Brother film. I show a lot of stills from their work because I think they have like wonderful cinematography and great use of color. And this is also that same artist, Bill Viola. You just saw a still in the last one with water. And he is also very intentional with his use of color. So colors have meanings. Um, in general, lighter colors have happier feelings. Um, baby blue often could mean innocent. So maybe you felt like you were innocent and then you're no longer so innocent. Um, maybe that's your transition. So maybe you would go from like light colors, pink, blue, light yellow, um, to more saturated, darker colors on the symbols, right? So again, maybe you, you could even do like a colored dye in water. Um, you can paint, take a box and you could paint it and use the colors there. Maybe that box is a symbol for you and different objects are going in. Um, darkness, light, so maybe you really control your your lighting and you have a, like a, a spotlight and then it sort of feels dark and then you want to say your transition goes into something happier. So there it is, maybe you're using bright colors, now we have like yellows and whites or light blues. Okay, so colors have a lot of meaning. And for this project, I want you to think about color 
you know, maybe you have a part where it's just a lot of red, and that's where you want to show like your transition was anger, or you started out with anger, or maybe you just felt numb, and you want to have a lot of gray. You know, maybe you're shooting like the sidewalk, you know, just like lots of texture, um, something like that. So think about color. Be really intentional with color um, as you're working with your project. Think about not just the symbols, but what colors will you be using to get across these emotions? Because the transition should be an emotional shift, like, you know, sad to happy or confined to feeling uh, relieved, some kind of emotional af um, af change. All right, so here's just a little summary. How do you start working with symbols? Think about the emotion of an object, all right? so. I want to describe something that is um, feels like cleansing, you know, so maybe it's, it's water. Think about how that can be expressed through gesture, movement, colors, and universal objects. So gesture, I don't want your hands in here, but you can edit things out, you can make things move, you can, uh, I've had people do like paper cranes with strings or, you know, there can be moving of the objects, but I don't want you to move the camera and um, I don't want you to be in it. You can edit yourself out if you need to get into the shot. Colors and objects. Avoid literal expressions. If you're talking about a class, I, you know, maybe your graphic design class changed your world. I don't want to see a book that says graphic design. You need to figure out a way to do that as a symbol. And again, just avoid objects with specific words on them. We'll interpret everything. All right, so no Nike, no words, anything like that. My suggestion is start out this project by writing. Just write, sort of write a couple of sentences and then turn that down to some bullets and then try to change those bullets into symbols, start adding colors, just write. It makes it a lot easier. All right, so that's the lecture for a little bit of history. We'll talk more about video art history and getting you started thinking about symbols. So go out there, start looking around, start thinking about what some symbols are. There are also some really good um, there's a commercial video for you to watch, and I want you to write down and think about what are the symbols in that commercial that you're seeing.